Today's meditation is drawn from the book of Job chapter 42 verses 10 to 16. This meditation is based on the theme status of women in a family. When the devil decided to destroy Job and divert him from God in a manner that he would rebuke him, the devil targeted Job's family. His daughters and sons were killed in a storm. By the end of the book, when God blesses Job with everything, we see him rejoicing in the birth of his daughters and sons. Coming from a country where the ratio of female infanticide is on an all-time rise, Job is a role model for many parents to acknowledge and revel at the birth of their kids, irrespective of their gender. The chief economic advisor Arvind Subramaniam, while addressing the issue of female infanticide, stated that a major reason for this lies in the ingrained preference of a male child due to the norms governing inheritance, the continued practice of paying a dowry, and the tradition of patriarchality. Since time immemorial, women have been ostracized from the society in a way that they had to trade the dignity, identity, and rightful inheritance for misogynistic pleasures. Throughout the Bible, we have witnessed female characters who have been on either end of the spectrum, proving their courage and bravery or submitting themselves to the pressure. But Oprah Winfrey said it better when she remarked, The time is up. Today's status of women in a family can be mainly clubbed under four categories. Firstly, women as daughters. When the Trump tapes were released in 2016, many politicians came out in a protest and expressed that they found the tweets offensive on behalf of their wives and daughters. This caught mass attention and in no time, Twitter took these politicians to task. Out of all, this particular tweet by Mary Elizabeth caught my attention where she says, If the only way you can be angry at what Trump says is because you have daughters, you might want to consider that you too see women as property. In Job 42.16, Job is seen to be wanting to divide his inheritance equally among his kids. Here generates the idea of equality in every sphere of life. When Sarah is told to clean the dining table and wash the dishes with her mom, while her sibling Josh sits with his dad watching the news, the parents should be blamed to have been watering the sapling of discrimination at such an early age. Secondly, we come across women as wives. In Christian context, despite having wives like Queen Esther and Abigail, we tend to take inspiration from St. Paul's sermon about women and submission in complete isolation. Every time we narrow down Melanie Trump's image because of everything her husband does, we're actually victimizing her under the same pretense. Why should any wife be held responsible for her man's action? Again, if a man decides to stay at home and work, or the woman decides to work abroad, or if the woman is paid more than the husband at her particular workplace, why should there be an ego clash? Thirdly, we come across women as mothers. Throughout the Bible, we have seen tender-hearted mothers looking after their kids, sometimes losing their firstborn to the crown, while at other times to lust, power or God's servitude. But through everything, I have witnessed strong mothers, those who believed that by the end of it all, their kids will be protected. Mothers are shown to be the ideal models for their kids to look up to, who are submissive and understanding and serene and tender-hearted and kind. But as Bob Dylan said in the 60s, times are changing. With a rise in working women, we see mothers taking a step back from their kids' life and letting them figure a way out of every mess. The role of mothers is undergoing a change and so is the attitude of the society. There is a certain level of acceptance that you can spot when it comes to motherhood and modernity. Fourthly, we have women as individuals. The role of women in the society is way more complex than the above. Women as breadwinners, women as leaders, women as lovers, women as anything in the world that they want to be. However, we have narrowed down women's role in the society to their relationship with men in the past, present and future. Today we see an evolution. While many people critique women's evolution as one where they need to choose between family and career, I have seen a range of ladies balancing the both with vigor and grace. Be it Esther who prioritized her people over herself, or Rahab who took a risk and saved her family, or even Ruth for that matter, who became the great-great-grandmother of Jesus Christ. The role of women has been changing in the history. More than being somebody's muse for poetry and to feed somebody else's tummy, women are breadwinners, fighters, and as Bible shows us time and again, they are contributors to the salvation plan of the Almighty. Let us pray. O Heavenly Father, we come before you as a family united in your name.
Help us to understand each other better and empower those who need to be empowered in this family. Help us to realize each other's worth and become a wall for the weak to lean on. In Father's holy name, we pray. Amen.